I begin by priming the entire model in white. To do this, I use Reaper Master Series Brush on Primer, thinned down considerably and applied using an airbrush. I'm now base coating the flesh areas of the model and to do this I'm using a 3 to 1 mixture of heavy skin tone and heavy violet. Now I like combining the standard skin tone and the violet just because the violet really gives a nice warm sort of a, uh, effect in the recesses of the flesh areas and I think this is really nice as things like brown and black often tend to muddy up the skin tone uh, so this is something I like to do particularly for the female models. For the first highlight I use pure heavy skin tone and I just spray this from above the model so it hits onto all of the raised areas. I apply this pretty liberally so it's getting on most of the surface just leaving the darker purple colour in the deepest recesses for our shading. I then apply a final highlight using e.l.f. skin tone. Now this is used very selectively just to highlight some of the more raised areas like the upper parts of the legs, the chest, etc. And uh, yeah, like I said, I'm being very selective. I'm not just spraying from above or anything. And uh, this is just going to really draw some more attention to those areas and add some more realism. I now base coat the scaly sort of dress slash tabard using Sanguini Base. This is a nice deep red and as you can see it's pretty thinned out because I want to have it going on in a nice smooth coat so I'll apply you know two to three layers to get a nice smooth opaque coverage. I now apply a bit of colour to the dragon which is on the arm of the uh, Dark Elf Sorcerer and to do this I simply use a green wash made by Secret Weapon Miniatures and I apply this liberally over the entire area. The idea is the highlights that we've already applied using the flesh colours of paint should show through this green layer to create our highlighting effect and this is just going to differentiate this colour tone from the flesh areas and obviously make it look green. I now use Secret Weapon Dark Sepia Wash. This is thinned out one to one with water and I'm just very carefully, or you know, not that carefully, I'm just applying it to the entire model's flesh areas and this is just going to give us some shading in the recesses. But I don't want it to be too dark because I don't want to darken down the flesh tone significantly and I also don't want to, you know, make it look too uh, dull in the recesses as I still want to keep that nice purple tone in there and I don't want to obscure it with the more brown sort of sepia look. I now apply a black wash to the deep red tabard or dress style of thing on the model. This is just going to create some very nice shading and darken down some of the recesses that we want to be less bright. I now use various mixtures of Sanguini Highlight and Vallejo Model Color White Glaze to highlight the scales on the model's dress slash tabard. Now I use thin paint and just carefully go around selectively highlighting the raised areas and you've got to be a bit careful with this because you want nice smooth transitions but if you do it properly it will end up looking quite nice and I'm pretty happy with the results I achieved here. I now paint all of the leather areas on the model. Uh, now these are just all the straps and areas that I want to be in a brown colour so for this I use extra opaque heavy brown and then for the highlights, I mix in some of the Vallejo Model Color White Glaze. Now this is quite a boring stage, it's pretty self-explanatory, so I haven't included a lot of footage of it. One thing I just wanted to quickly mention is the White Glaze here. The reason I like to use this is I find it gets much smoother highlights, or it's much easier to get smooth highlights than simply mixing in white paint. However, naturally, you could just switch this out and use some basic white paint for your highlights. Um, in any of the circumstances, I use this paint, uh, but I just find using this stuff makes things a lot easier. Easier. I now paint all the gold areas on the model. To do this I start off with a base coat of Palomino Gold, I then wash with Dark Sepia, wash made by Secret Weapon Miniatures, and I then highlight with successive amounts of white glaze added into the original base coat of Palomino Gold. Naturally this is thinned out to create nice smooth transitions. Now obviously this is a non-metallic metal style, you could use standard metallic paints if you wanted to but I just decided to go this route because it was going to help achieve the look I was going for on this model. I now finish off the rest of the details on the model. 
I begin by doing the non-metallic metal steel. Uh, now to do this, I start off with a base coat of cold grey. I wash with secret weapon wash soft body black, and then I highlight using some white glaze mixed into the cold grey. So basically it's essentially the same process as what I did for the gold non-metallic metal. I then proceed to base coat the hair, just using black, and then highlight it using thinned out cold grey, and then eventually a few dots of cold grey mixed with white glaze. I then proceed to paint in the model's eyes, and to do this I just use pure white made by Reaper Master Series, and I mix this two parts paint to one part drying retarder, and uh, for the retarder I also use Reaper Master Series paint, and I'm very carefully applying this to the eyes of the model. Um, I'm using a fine brush, I'm using a Winsor Newton Series 7 Zero brush, and I'm just taking my time being very careful and just painting in these areas. You'll notice I haven't painted any pupils in. I chose not to do this because I wanted to kind of give it a bit of a mad sort of look, almost like she was casting a spell or something, and you could just see the whites of her eyes. I thought that would be pretty cool, um, but that's sort of a personal preference thing. If you want to paint in pupils, by all means, go ahead. I decided to leave the head off the dragon on this model because I wanted it to look as if the head of the dragon had been chopped off by the Dark Sorcerer. So I wanted to make it look like maybe it had been uh, for a sacrifice or some sort of spell or evil magic. Uh, so now I'm going to create some blood effects and to do this I use Tamiya Clear Red Gloss Enamel Paint. Now this is a very transparent uh, glossy paint which is going to look a lot like blood and I'm just going to liberally apply this using a synthetic brush to the areas where this would realistically be so particularly concentrating on areas on the dragon around the actual area of the severed stump but also on the model's hand and uh, also on her other hand where maybe she might have been holding the dragon's head or holding the weapon which was used to remove the dragon's head etc etc I just wanted to kind of give this nice uh, uh, you know, almost a bit of character or a bit of a story behind the model, so that's why I decided to add in this extra detail. But naturally, it's optional, you could have just left the dragon head on and, uh, you know, uh, gone without this entire step. Alright, so the final stage is to construct the base. Now, to do this, I used a piece of uh, rounded wood or a cylinder of wood, and I just created a bit of a stone sort of texture on the top of that using some milliput which I sculpted into. I then proceeded to do a bit of zenith or highlighting on it. I just primed it all in black and then I sprayed from above using some white primer and I then proceeded to paint the rim of the base back in black. Then I decided to cover the entire thing in a wash of dark sepia just to give it some nice brown colouring and that's just going to allow the nice highlights to show through this shading stage. The final stage on the base is simply to use some pigments. Now I like to use secret weapon pigments and I just use a whole bunch of yellow and brown pigments and I just stipple them on dry, I'm not mixing them with any sort of fluid or anything and I just use an old synthetic brush to do this. I just like uh, using pigments for this because I find it's really the best and in my opinion the only way to get really realistic and nice looking rock. Even though I didn't use particularly realistic tones here, you can still see it looks very natural and it looks really nice uh, and it gives that real dry dusty sort of effect which is what we're going for when we're trying to do like uh, rocks and things like that. The final stage is to attach the model to the base and then also I just give it a light dusting of Vallejo model colour matte varnish just around the area of the base and you know the model's legs. Uh, I'm careful to avoid getting this on any of the areas where I've applied the blood effects because we don't want to tone down the gloss effect there but this light dusting is just going to seal in those pigments permanently. That being said remember it is a very light dusting if you apply it heavily it'll mess up the pigments it'll tone down the rich earthy feel we've given the base and really mess it up so that's why I apply a very thin light dusting sort of coat